Hello everyone, Jim from Ohio here, and we're approaching winter time in Ohio, so it's going to be time pretty soon to move all of our projects indoors. Now to do that, uh, fortunately the new house that we moved into did come with a 30 by 40 pole barn. The problem is the pole barn is not insulated, uh, nor does it have any type of heat. And even during the summertime, it had no air conditioning. And because it's a metal building, uh, it gets pretty uncomfortable in here, both in the winter time and the summertime. So to combat that and make it more comfortable to move inside and do all of my projects, uh, I've decided to add a mini split heat pump that serves as both an, uh, uh, it's a full HVAC system, just a mini uh, split system. Um, it is supposed to be able to both heat and cool. Now, uh, when you go to look for the various mini split systems out there, you're gonna see a huge range of them. And it's hard to know exactly what to look for or what to target. There's a lot of different things you should be looking at before you decide and make your purchase. And I created a small list and I'd like to just kind of run down this list of how I decided on the unit that I purchased. Uh, so the first question you probably should ask yourself is how large of a space is it that you want to heat and cool? So as I mentioned, my building is 30 by 40. So if you do the math, that's 1,200 square feet. Now you do have to account for other things like you know, is your, uh, how high is your ceiling? Is it an eight foot ceiling that's enclosed? Is it a 10 foot ceiling that's open like mine is in my pole barn? Uh, so the effectiveness of that mini split system or any heating and cooling system you put in anywhere, you do have to account for those. Now, I am kind of jumping the gun and I'm installing my mini split before I get everything insulated in my pole barn. And the reason I'm doing that is part of my uh, project indoors this winter time is going to be insulating my barn. But I don't want it to be frigidly cold when I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and install the mini split before I do all of the insulation just so it's a little more comfortable when I'm in the barn installing that insulation. Uh, so when you look for your mini split, you do have to look and size it according to your building. Now, the other thing that I'm going to keep in mind is while my outbuilding is 30 by 40, realistically, I'm not going to use all of the space for workspace. I've got a large section over to this side of the barn that's going to be used for storing my lawn tractor, all of my outdoor tools and utensils that I garden with, so there's no need to heat that. I also have a loft that I built over in the middle portion over to the left here, and there's really no need to heat and cool that either, but I would like to heat and cool the uh, woodworking area. And then I'm also on this side of the building, I'm gonna have a recreation room or a craft room that my wife can also use. Um, so when I sized the unit that I bought, I didn't try to size it for the whole 1200 square foot of the building. Uh, I went ahead and sized it for half of the building. The unit that I bought is considered a one-ton unit or a 12,000 BTU unit, and it's supposed to cover about 650 square feet. And I'll tell you why I went with that unit as I go through some of the other questions that you probably want to ask yourself. So the next question you should ask yourself is the efficiency rating of the unit. The more efficient it is, the more cooling and heating power it's going to have and the more effectively it's going to heat and cool your area at less of a cost of operation. Uh, so the unit that I picked out was actually an EG4 mini split system that's sold by Signature Solar. And I will leave a link to that particular, particular unit down in the description of this video below. Uh, but I went with the one ton unit as opposed to the two ton unit uh, because I'm going to have about 700 square feet that I'm actually heating and cooling. 
the particular unit I got was a, a SEER rating of SEER 2 28.5. Now, if you look at the typical furnace that's in a home or air conditioning system or heat pump in a home, you're probably going to see uh, numbers down around 10 to 12 SEER rating, where the mini split systems are much, much higher efficiency rating. So they're able to get those higher numbers compared with your whole home units. Now, uh, the SEER rating was changed about a year or two ago, I'm guessing. Now it's a SEER 2 rating, which has higher efficiency standards. So there's different measurements that they come up with those numbers. So here we are on the computer. And uh, what I did was I pulled up what the definition of SEER is. And it says here, SEER stands for Seasonal Energy Efficiency Ratio, or rating. This is a ratio of a cooling output of an air conditioner or heat pump with a typical cooling season, divided by the energy it uses in watt hours. And then the newer rating is SEER 2. It's an updated version of this calculation that uses the new M1 blower testing procedure. And then when, when we come further down here, um, it uh, mentions the difference between uh, SEER 1 and SEER 2. SEER 2 uses the M1 blower testing procedure offering a more accurate representation of real world conditions. And it goes on to say this doesn't necessarily mean SEER 2 rated systems are more efficient than SEER rated systems. However, SEER 2 ensures a realistic efficiency rating. Now, the third equation that I wanted to look at before purchasing the unit was the ease of installation. Uh, the EG4 mini split has hundreds of videos online already of everyday average do-it-yourself uh, people installing without the help or aid of a professional HVAC technician. Uh, most units, you do have to have meters, you have to have a vacuum pump, and you have to be able to pull a vacuum on the unit. And most people, average DIY people like myself, I don't have a set of gauges, I don't have a vacuum pump that I could dedicate just to that, much less purchase it for something I'm only gonna use it for one time. So the EG4 mini split and several other units that are out there are made for do-it-yourselfers. So they come with a pre-charged line set, they come with a pre-charged unit, so you don't have to do any of that uh, connecting of the vacuum pump, uh, connecting of the gauges. They make it so that you get, uh, make sure you have tight connections on everything, and then you turn a screw, it releases the gas into the unit, and it's done. You do have to check the unit for leaks, uh, but that can be done with soapy water. So all of these, according to all of the instruction videos that I've seen so far, made it look like something that would be very, very easy for me to install myself. And then the last thing that I looked at was the overall cost of the unit. Now, when you go out and look on either Amazon or just Google different mini split systems that are for sale, there's a huge assortment of them and they range all the way from $500 for the whole unit up to a couple thousand dollars and depending on how how large of a unit if you want to go with a two ton unit instead of the one ton unit it's going to add up and be almost double the price now that two ton unit is going to require uh, 220 power as opposed to 110 power uh, or 120 ac power which is the unit that i bought but the overall cost for the unit that i bought was about $1,400, and that was for the unit. I did pay extra to have it shipped. It wasn't that much to have it shipped. Uh, but most of the units that were out there around the five, six, seven hundred dollar range, all of the items that I spoke about earlier, uh, you, when you do the math, it makes sense to go ahead and buy the more expensive unit that I bought because the overall cost of the unit $1,400 compared with a five or $600 unit. Well, the five or $600 units, first of all, you're gonna have to pay for somebody to install them. They don't come with a pre-charged line set. 
They're not pre-charged with the refrigerant that's gonna be needed. So you're probably gonna to have to pay somebody to do that for you. There's also electrical work that's gonna to need to be done. Now you might be able to do that yourself, um, but in most cases, if, if an HVAC contractor is coming on site to charge the unit for you, most of the time they're gonna do or wanna do the whole install and wanna do the electrical connection as well. Um, this particular, uh, the, the lower cost units, that's your first thing that you're gonna have to pay is either that or you're gonna have to pay for a set of gauges and a vacuum pump so that you can do it yourself. Uh, plus the refrigerant. Um, the other thing that you have to take into consideration is the overall cost of operation down the road. Those are the things that I looked at and evaluated before I made my choice. Now there may be other items that you would want to look at yourself and if you've got things uh, that you did when you looked at these or are your your doing a search online now to decide what type of unit you want to get. If there's anything that you think I've overlooked, do me a favor, put it down in the comments below. Uh, this is a new thing for me. I've never installed one. I've never used one or had one. Uh, so it's a learning experience for me as well as most of you out there. Uh, the more popular model of mini split that uh, most of the YouTube videos and reviews were for uh, was for a Mr. Cool uh, unit. And so what I did, uh, I know I wanted to get a one ton unit or a 12,000 K BTU unit. And so I pulled up the latest Mr. Cool DIY uh, system and this is their fourth gen system new release and you can see the Mr. Cool unit uh, runs about uh, $1,738 and that's with a 30% uh, discount and uh, so with this unit I did go down and I looked at the uh, specifications made sure that you know what I was getting and when I looked at the specifications I saw it does indeed have a SEER 2 rating of 22.5 and then uh, one of the other units that um, was uh, or had a lot of uh, reviews on YouTube was the EG4 unit which is uh, the one that I ended up going with and I looked at uh, a similar unit here and so Signature Solar was selling uh, this EG4 um, it's a same uh, same rating as the Mr. Cool unit, uh, 12,000 uh, kBTUs in a, a SEER 2 22 uh, SEER unit, and it's also the do-it-yourself model, meaning it's going to have the um, pre-charge line set. And you can see Signature Solar has a much better price, uh, $1,299. And uh, coming down here, just looking at uh, some of the uh, features. Um, but I think we've already got the SEER 2 rating on that that it mentions up here in the description. Uh, and then I, I went and I looked, and Signature Solar also had a 1 ton or 12,000 K BTU that had the 22 or the SEER 2. Uh, rating of 28.5. Uh, so that was a considerable difference going between a SEER 2 uh, 22 versus a SEER 2 28.5. And it looks like their price uh, for it, their normal price was $14.99. Uh, sale price was $14.49, still well below what that Mr. Cool unit uh, had, but the difference in $12.99 for the, um, uh, actually uh, here, let me back up just a, a minute. Uh, this one right here is the one that you could get that runs on solar. Um, this one is not solar, uh, but it has a better SEER rating, the 28.5 SEER rating. So the next thing I wanted to do was find out, you know, for this extra money, the difference in $1,299 versus $1,449, um, and the difference in a 22 versus a 28 uh, and a half SEER rating, what would my cost savings be? 
So what I did, I pulled up a Sears savings calculator and I plugged the numbers in as best I could. Um, so I put in the 22 SEER rating of, uh, say, a current air conditioner. And uh, unfortunately, the, uh, I couldn't find a calculator that would go down to a one-ton unit. So I, I put in the lowest that it had available, which was a one-and-a-half ton. And then I put in the SEER 2 uh, rating of 28 uh, so to do a comparison between 22 and 28. And so basically what it gave me is it says that uh, the current or 22 uh, one and a half ton unit would consume about $109 a year in electricity, where the 28.5 would only be $82 per year. So it showed a 33% savings per year and a five-year, 10-year, uh, along with 15-year savings. So I think it, you know, seeing that I would uh, realistically recoup my cost um, within uh, the first three to five years by paying that extra couple hundred dollars uh, between the $12.99 and the $14.49, I decided to go ahead and go with um, the uh, higher rated unit the 28.5 unit and not go with the solar uh, because i'm going to have solar on my house anyway and um, so either way i'm going to be running solar whether it's direct solar input or, or solar on my house but this way i'm going to get the best of both worlds i can run off a of solar and i can uh, take advantage of that better sear rating which means more dollar savings but uh we'll go ahead uh, this now i want to make one other point this is not going to be a how-to video there's plenty of other videos out on the web that shows how to install these units so the last thing i want to do is put something out there that's already saturated um, what i'm going to do is go over some of the things that i'm doing to prepare for the installation and as I make progress through the steps of insulation, I'll just bring you along and show you what I've done and how I've done it. Um, there are a lot of videos out there that overlook those particular steps, and you may not know to expect those if you're going to install one of these on your own. So let's go and look at the first thing that I did. Okay, here we are at my electric panel, and this is a sub-panel. My main panel is in the house, but this is the sub-panel that was installed in the pole barn when I moved in. Uh, down here is an unused breaker. It's for this cable that's, that's down here. Uh, most of these are all of my outlets and lights. This is the main breaker uh, that's coming in from my house for the entire pole barn. So the first thing that you need to uh, consider is whether or not your unit requires a dedicated circuit. And the EG4 system, uh, the instructions do recommend that you don't share a circuit, but instead have a dedicated circuit. So the first thing that I did was install this breaker. Now, the unit will operate off of a 15 amp breaker, um, that was the minimum requirements according to the instruction manual. However, they do recommend that you go with a dedicated 20 amp breaker. So the first thing that I did was get this breaker installed and then run the cable over to the area where my mini split's going to be. Here we are on the outside of my pole barn. And so the next thing that I did was install this disconnect uh, switch. And all, it did, all this is is a standard disconnect switch you'd see with a, any other like outdoor unit heat pump or um, hot tub or something like that. It's a 60 amp box and it just has a, a disconnect pullout. So the wire that runs from the circuit breaker inside that I talked about a moment ago uh, runs over to this right here. When deciding where you're going to place the outdoor unit for the mini split, uh, several things need to be taken into consideration. Um, 
some people have put them on the ground. We'll put like a concrete slab in, or uh, I know they sell plastic pads or gravel. You could put down a gravel pad as well. Uh, but I chose not to do that. And the reason for that is this side of the barn that I'm mounting uh, this unit on is the west side. And we do get prevailing winds during the winter time. And I'm worried if I set the unit on the ground or on a pad that's located on the ground, as the wind blows up towards the pole barn, I'm going to have snow drifting up against the unit. And so that would not be a good thing. Uh, so what I did, uh, I did fabricate this uh, rack that I'm going to put it on. This was made from two pieces of the heavy duty uh, super strut, as well as one piece of the uh, thin or the lightweight super strut and um, I did spray paint it to match the color of the barn um, but uh, it's heavy duty it is mounted uh, pretty solid it doesn't uh, uh, move at all uh, now when doing this you do have to pay very close attention so I, I do have it pretty close to where I have my uh, disconnect switch so I'll be able to just uh, run the whip over from this directly over to the outdoor unit but uh, you do have to uh, consider where the bolts penetrate your barn you want to make sure that you have some structure behind to mount these two now the other thing is because you're drilling into the side the metal side of the pole barn you're creating uh, multiple penetrations into the metal that lead directly to the wood and so you don't want any water to run down the side of the barn and come in contact with the lag bolts and then follow it through to your timber frame on the inside. So what I did was uh, I did slather, I put a good bead of caulk on the bolt when I drove it into the side of the building. So as it pulled tight, it, it did put a good bead of caulk around the outer uh, area of the of the bolt so that it seal it sealed up that penetration where all of my bolts are located so just something that i haven't heard anybody else mention in some of the other mini split install videos so i thought i'd just uh, bring that up uh, just in case anyone is uh, uh, considering building a frame like this yourself now i did also you'll notice right here i did use a good solid angle bracket these are the angle brackets that are designed for the super strut. The same place that I bought the super strut, I was able to find uh, these brackets. Uh, and then with, with the cross member down below, this thing isn't going to go anywhere, and it's probably a supported tank. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's just another thing to consider. So here we are at the outside unit. And a couple of things to be aware of here. Of course, you will need to have some type of a uh, disconnect switch if you're going to wire it in permanently. I know that some people will wire it directly into just a standard 120 uh, outlet, uh, plug-in outlet, but I chose to have a standard disconnect. Uh, and you will want to make sure that you have watertight connections that go over to the main unit. And so we've got the one feeding the power here, and then we've got the other one that goes back uh, to the power uh, and the line set. Um, now, you are also going to need, depending on uh, how much of the line set you use, you're going to need to have some place to store the extra line set. And so, as you can see, what I did, I simply coiled it around and uh, wrapped a couple zip ties around it. And I've got it in a way that uh, nothing is kinked and it's neatly placed away behind uh, behind the unit. I think that they do say that you need about 8 to 10 inches of space between the back of the unit and the building. Uh, I made sure that I had a little bit of storage space for the line set as well as still had that 8 inches or so of uh, space in this area right here.
um, you are going to have a condensate uh, condensate uh, drain hose so you're going to need to manage that somehow so I did just run it right down behind the unit and I've got it tucked in so that it drains right here uh, and then uh, one of the things that uh, nobody ever mentions on any of the uh, videos uh, that I've watched is where the line set comes out of your building uh, I have seen some people just leave it hanging um, I don't like the idea of doing that I wanted to make sure that it, the unit was protected the line set was protected uh, the hole going into my barn was protected so you can pick these up pretty cheap they come in either metal or they come in plastic the one I got is plastic and I just picked it up on Amazon and uh, it came with a lot of extra pieces that I ended up not using just because I didn't use it but all this does is it neatly tucks that line set in and protects it and makes it look pretty on the outside of the building and uh, I just uh, mounted that uh, to the metal building. It has a snap cover that's held in place uh, everywhere that there's a joint. And I think that these, each of these pieces are about, uh, I think about 20, 22 inches long. And I just have it open at the bottom. And I did stuff a little bit of insulation uh, to fill that extra gap so that I don't have any type of uh, rodents or anything go up inside of it. Uh, but those are just a few things to keep in mind with the outdoor uh, now, unit. Uh, I picked this up, uh, I think about August or September of last year. I installed it uh, in October and I didn't do a video when I installed it, mainly because this was the first one of these that I've ever installed. And me being a beginner, I don't want to share information about something that I'm totally inexperienced with. So I watched a lot of videos. Uh, I did a, uh, watched a lot of review videos. I did a lot of research online before deciding to buy this particular unit. And uh, so far, uh, it was still winter, the first year that I've been using it, but so far I've been real happy with it. Um, it was very easy to install. They do make some excellent videos and, and there are a lot of YouTubers that also posted videos on their experience installing these as well. And uh, just wanted to talk about it a little bit and tell you uh, just a few things you should know before buying any type of a mini split, whether it be this one or any other unit that's on the market. Um, so uh, this unit is running right now and it is totally quiet. Uh, I mean, there is very, very little noise. You have to really listen close to hear it, uh, both on the inside of the building and the outside of the building. The uh, external unit that is attached to this, um, even when you're standing right next to it, you almost have to look at it to see if the fan is running to know for sure whether it is running. Extremely, extremely quiet. Uh, it does come with a remote control and uh, most of the controlling can be done uh, with this. Uh, there is an app that you can load on your phone or your iPad and uh, actually link that app up to your uh, local uh, home network so you can control it from your phone wherever you are really. Um, but uh, very easy to install. Now, I did get the DIY unit that had the pre-charged line set, so I didn't have to have a vacuum pump. Um, I, I didn't have to have any special tools, you know, just basic uh, tools to install it. And um, yeah, it was, it was a piece of cake to get the thing installed. Uh, I did install it on my own, including lifting this part up and mounting it on the bracket. The only part that I needed help with was uh, for the outside rack, uh, but uh, because it weighs about 75 pounds and I lifted it up onto a rack and needed to, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't drop it. I did have my neighbor help me with that part. But uh, before you get one of these units, you are going to need to size uh, your particular building. Um, or size the unit for the amount of space that you're going to be heating and cooling. And so uh, I know I've shown several videos of my barn in the past. I've made several changes to it uh, over the last several months. And uh, so it's about 1,200 square feet. 
Now, when you look up units and you research on the amount of uh, space that these things cover, you need to really take that with a grain of salt. Now, this is a one-ton unit or a 12,000 uh, 12, BTU unit, and they say that it's good for up to 850 square feet. Now, obviously, my barn is bigger than 850 square feet, which is why I did this. Uh, what I did was I hung a, a tarp. Uh, actually, there's two tarps, and I do have some pulleys at the top on that one where my uh, main door is to the barn and so um, I can pull the rope that's uh, tied uh, uh, up there above the door I can uh, get that down from the cleat and pull that and that part of the tarp wall will roll up and be out of the way so I can open the door but uh, by splitting this building in half with the tarp wall what it does is it just it, it helps this unit uh, to to uh, take care of the space uh, that I need the space that I plan on doing the bulk of the work. Uh, the other side of the barn is simply my uh, storage for my lawn tractor, my outdoor equipment. I do have woodworking equipment over there. And uh, actually this unit, even with the, the tarp wall up, I know I'm losing heat. I'm, I'm going to lose cool air over to that side, but it's working great so far. Um, but the reason I say that you should take the amount of space that they tell you it's good for with a grain of salt, there's a lot of things that they don't mention in there that you do need to consider. And uh, that would be uh, how much cubic space. So the average home has an eight foot ceiling. Uh, I've got a 10 foot ceiling in here. So obviously I'm gonna be heating and cooling much more space. So in heating mode like it is now, a lot of my hot air is going to rise upward. So it's gonna take much more time to heat up this space. Uh, because that, that heat's going to have to start at the top and work its way down uh, and account for any place that I'm losing it, like on the sides of my tarp or, you know, through my garage door and, and places like that. Uh, now, the other side of the barn, I have not totally enclosed the roof in. Uh, you can see I've got open rafters here, and uh, that is just another place that you're going to lose a lot of your heat during the winter time. And so that's why I made it a priority to go ahead and get a ceiling up in here. But take that into consideration, not only the square footage of the room or the building that you're going to heat and cool, but the cubic space that you're going to I think gonna that's about through. all. If anybody has any questions or wants to know more about this unit, uh, feel free to look down in the description below the video and feel free to leave your questions there. Uh, I'll be happy to answer what I'm able to answer. I'm not an expert on these units, but I do now have experience and feel comfortable uh, answering some of the questions, at least with my experience. Um, so this is Jim with Jim Jenny, Ohio, and uh, please give me a thumbs up if you got anything out of this video, and uh, be sure to tell your friends and family to uh, look up my channel, and uh, hopefully they'll find something they can benefit from there as well. Uh, take care, stay warm, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.